Welcome back, everybody, to Phoenix Wright. Ace, attorney, justice for all. We're back. We have a little recess in the court, thank goodness, and I guess we're telling Maggie now about our predicament. Oh, dear me. Amnesia? I can't believe my lawyer's trying to defend me in such a state. Well, I didn't really have a choice. What was I gonna do, leave you there? Why didn't you tell me, sir? I'm sorry, I didn't mention it to you. Oh, I know what to do. I heard you can fix something like this with a really strong shock to your system. Come on, lower your head a little. A Maggie kick should be all you need. No, girl, please, don't, don't kick my head, actually. No, 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 I think I'll pass on this one. Come on, I'm sorry. Whenever I see someone in trouble, I have a hard time leaving them alone. I tend to stick my nose where it doesn't belong and try to tackle everyone's problems. Oh my god, this girl is me. Well, my head's one problem you won't be tackling today. Well, we're here to solve your problem first. We can deal with mine later. For now, do you think you can fill me in on a few things? And also karate chop your own head. Give yourself some amnesia, why don't you? Of course, I'd be honored to. Uh, well, I guess we'll start with my name and then I can tell you about me. No, 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 that's okay, really. I think I know you and your name pretty well by now. Yeah, we just like defended the whole thing in court. We're okay. I was wondering if you could help me figure out a few things about myself. So, my name is Phoenix Wright. What a weird name. Oh, this is serious. You really don't remember. I'll tell you what, sir. You can have this back, and maybe it'll help. What is this? A business card? I got this from you. It's my most prized possession. You can borrow it for now, but please give it back, okay? Phoenix, you're moving up in the world. You got business cards now? That's crazy. Okay, there are some numbers written on the back. Oh, that's your cell phone number. All right, we got the business card. Can we look at it? I would like to see Phoenix's taste in graphic design, please. Can I look at it? No, you can't check it. It's my business card. I hand wrote my cell phone number on the back. All right. Man, Phoenix, all we had was a badge before. Uh, by the way, I plan on showing that badge to everyone when I can. Don't you worry about that. I guess for now, we should stop talking about me and start talking about this case. This case? Yep. Can you think of anything that would be helpful for me to know? Um, what can I tell you? Uh, I can't think of anything other than the incident with that cell phone, but... Cell phone? Yeah, your eyes lit up when we talked about it at the detention center, sir. What's that? What cell phone is that? Hurry up then and tell me. This might be very important. Yes, karate chop. Okay, Roger. All right, let's hear about this. It was on the day of the crime, just before 6 p.m. I picked up a lost cell phone while on a walk with Dustin. Oh, with that same ringtone? It's Dracula. He's calling everybody. What is going on here? Why does the cell phone have the... Why does the cell phone have the same ringtone? All of a sudden, the phone began to ring. Um, hello? Oh, thank you. I've been searching for my phone. Is this yours? Oh, I'm glad you called. We can meet up and I can give this back. I'll be right there. Uh, I'm sorry. I didn't catch your name. You can call me Maggie. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Okay, so she talked to somebody on the phone who ended up knowing her name. Mm-mm. The light bulb already going off, you know what I'm saying? We agreed to meet up at 6 p.m. Dustin and I waited for the person to show up. But they never did. Hmm. So where's the phone you found now? I gave it to you yesterday. It's the same phone. That's why it has the ringtone. So that's not Phoenix's phone? That's why he was looking at it so perplexed. I see. Wait a minute. So does the phone belong to that Dracula Sun guy that we saw with the eyeliner? Hmm. Oh, one other thing I want to look at really quick is the court records. I didn't realize in this game, because they don't really tell you, that you can actually present the profiles in court. We learned that the last time, and I just wanted to see what we had. Because a lot of people said you really should look over the profiles when you can, because uh, if you ever have to present one, you'll know what to do. So we already have this one, which we presented. It's Maggie, my client. The only thing I can recall is that she's a policewoman. And then Dustin Prince, haha. -ha. The victim and a policeman, it seems like he was dating the defendant, Maggie Bird. And then this guy, who do we care about him? Not at all. I don't. All right, so we have Dracula's cell phone, or his son's cell phone, actually. The kid didn't look very old. Is that the phone in my pocket? So that's not Phoenix's phone. I was totally wrong about that then. Do you think it has anything to do with the murder? I don't really know, but if my eyes lit up... 
Oh god, oh my god, who is this? I don't know who this is. <gasps> Girl, how you doing? Oh my god, I was wondering when we would see her, or if we would even see her. Oh, I'm so happy to see you, Maya. Girl, uh oh. Phoenix isn't gonna know who she is. Is he? Oh my god, she's gonna go ballistic. I called you a million times, but you wouldn't pick up. And when I went to check in the courtroom, everyone had already left. Uh oh. Ah, uh, who in the heck is this? Oh no, she's gonna slap him so hard that he's gonna get his memory back for the next 500 years. Let me guess, I'm supposed to know this girl too. Yep, Phoenix, you are surrounded in pretty ladies. That's how it happens. Hey, good morning, Maggie. And a good morning to you too, Maya. So, so, how's it going? Uh, is there a word for worse than abysmal? Oh, what if I said that everything will be fine? That's right, it's Maya to the rescue with the ultra-decisive, super-important evidence. Here you are, Nick, the thing you wanted me to bring. Huh? Oh, oh, thanks. What the heck is this? A list? It has about 20 people's names and phone numbers written on it. It was kind of tough, but I managed to find out some dirt. It looks like these guys are up to no good. No good? As in... There's a group of con artists the police are currently investigating. I think these guys are members of that group. Where did you get this from? Alright, it's just a list. Names list. That's it. Why did a group of con artists pop up in a case like this? Can we look at that? Like, can we see, like, any names on it or anything? No, I can't check it. A list of unfamiliar names and phone numbers. Members of a con artist group? Okay. Don't look at me! Hmm, and where did you get this list from in the first place? What? Why are you asking that? You're the one who asked me to look this up yesterday. Oh, oops. Oh, is that right? These numbers were in the memory of that phone Maggie found. Oh, I see. They're like the contacts, are they? Okay, so we've got the contacts of the cell phone. So that's where they're from. You're awfully forgetful these days, Nick. I hope I never get to be a forgetful little prune like you. Well, that's rude. I'm only like five years older than her, aren't I? Jesus. Uh, Maya, actually, Mr. Wright is... Mr. Wright, recess is now over. Oh, I guess Maya's not gonna know that we have amnesia. Whoops. It's probably for the best, to be honest. Can you imagine how the freak out she would have if she found out? Please bring the defendant and then return to the courtroom immediately. Oh, oops. Guess you have to get going. We can talk about you being old later. Great. The story of my life. Wish us luck. All right, here we go. I guess I have all the pieces now, more or less. Well, if he's saying that, then I'm assuming we can win with what we have here. We just have to figure out how. I'm really worried about that cell phone nonsense. Uh, we also have to see who they're calling as a witness. Come on, Nick. Better get a move on. Yeah. We can do it, Nick. Don't worry. We uh, Judge Judy is behind us in this. I've got this. Okay, here we go. Rabble, rabble, rabble. Yes? The court will now reconvene. Please call your next witness to the stand, Mr. Payne. Uh, yes, Your Honor. Uh, but before I do, if I may say a few words. What is it, Mr. Payne? It's about the next witness. Oh no, what now? He has a tendency to say things that rub people the wrong way, you see. So you mean like every other witness we've ever had, ever? <laughs> I'm not so worried about that. So I asked the court might be a little lenient on... No, lay the hammer down, Judge, come on. There's no need to give a preface, just hurry up and call your witness, please. D -d -d yes, Your Honor. The prosecution calls its next witness a drifter who was taking a walk in the park on the day of the murder. A drifter? Like what? Like a homeless person? What? Whoa, oh my god, it's Dracula's son. Well, everything just went off for me at once. It's his cell phone, isn't it? Isn't it? He looks like he would have a Dracula cell phone, to be honest. And when Phoenix was looking at it and it rang, he was there and hit him over the head. It's his cell phone. Oh, no, I must be right about this. Before I do, I'd like to clarify a little something. What do you want, Eyeliner McGee? Like, first of all, whoever taught you how to put on your mascara like that, they did you a bad, because, like, that don't look good. <laughs> He's a clump crusher or something, boy. Uh, all right, go ahead. Just now, you introduced my wonderful self to the court, correct? Perhaps as a drifter who was taking a walk. D did I? But I will not stand for that. Now you've tinted the court's eyes and colored me wrongly. Sure, I suppose calling me a university is to be the actual truth to give and settle as evil as death. Everything in my life is to be the utmost highest top grade quality, and I merely look for that perfect top notch, unbeatable university. Don't you see? I have a rigorous selection of process in doing my walk. What the? 
Is he related to Old Bag? Good, he can't be. That's <laughs> good, Christ. Yes, yes, I understand. I'm very sorry. I'll be more careful from now on. What is he? The human chatterbox? He's he's related to the Micro Machines guy. Do you guys remember the Micro Machines guy? I don't think a lot of you are old enough to remember what that is. Oh, I have to question him? Great. All right, Dracula son. Fashion cars, women glasses, and of course university first rates only need apply. Glasses? But you aren't wearing any. And before those glasses are his too. I mean, they were blue. He's wearing a blue a blue jacket. It would match. That's enough. Your name, witness. Yeah, Judge. Give it to him. Throw him out. Judge Judy would not stand for this. Not even for a second. She would throw them out so fast. Oh, is that how you want to play this? Using your power and influence to keep the young people down. I see how you work now. You old people and your dirty tricks. You thought you had me, but you thought wrong. Wait, he just asked your name. What? No! Judge, don't do this! What are you doing? Oh, man. I forgive you, alright. I suppose I can tell you my name. I am Richard Wellington, the drifting virtuoso with a PhD in drifting, as it were. So you're a professional trust fund baby bomb. That's what you look like. If you wanted to, you could call me a university student in transit. I knew he didn't look too old. Uh, Mr. Wellington, on the day of the murder, you were taking a, uh, strolling through the park, correct? It would appear that you are attached to that word. If you must, then by all means. But I remind you that I am in no way a prepubescent boy out on a walk with mommy. Why? Did you kill her? I wouldn't be surprised. If you must know, I will but- Anyway, please testify to the court what you saw during your walk through the park. See, you said it again. Taking a walk. You know, you- Yeah. Judge, throw that at him. Just beat him. Beat him with it. <laughs> what your witness will do, Mr. Wellington. Yeah, here we go. Okay. What's this fool gotta say? What I saw that day. Mm-hmm. All gonna be lies. 100%. I'm calling it right now. I was at the park all afternoon, deep in thought about my life situation. <laughs> well, haven't we all been there? I don't remember the time all that well, but I do believe it was past 6 p.m. Alright. All of a sudden, a police officer falls from above right in front of my eyes. Uh-huh. Without a thought, I looked up, and there I met the eyes of a charming young lady. Also notice there's no name in the sand at the moment. Mm-hmm. That's probably gonna come into play later. Of course, I remember her sweet face. It was that of the pretty defendant there. The only other thing I saw was the banana that fell on the police officer. Oh no! He thinks it's a banana too? I don't want to be on the same mindset as this dude. I'm changing my answer. It was a baseball club. <laughs> that was certainly a decisive testimony. Decisive? Nick, did you hear what he just said? Yeah. That's all you have to say? How can you be so calm? It's strange. My mind is very calm and clear. Maybe it's because I believe in my client. You mean Maggie? Yes. And if she really is innocent, then that can only mean one thing. That guy is lying. Oh, he sure is. I'm for 100% sure. You may not question the witness, Miss Wright. Oh, boy. Roll up your sleeves and get ready for this, Dracula's son. Oh, man. I am, I am so ready for this. I got a few things I want to question him on. Right. Oh, our health bar is the same, is it, from before? So maybe we have one health bar throughout the whole- the entire court proceeding that we're going through? That's gonna be tricky later. I was at the park all afternoon deep and thought about my life situation. Well, tell me about that. I'd love to hear about your life situation. So you were at the park all afternoon? You seem to have a lot of free time. Huh. <laughs> that was very rude of you. But then again, what can I expect? That's what you get from a man who graduated from a no-name trash university. How dare you? I have a badge and a business card now. Now, this might be hard for a mush-headed, feeble-minded baboon like you, but I have to think very carefully about the future of our great country. Phoenix, just hop over the bench and punch him. Nobody will care. But I thought you said you were thinking about which college to go to just now. Oh, please. Which university I go to will directly affect the very future of this country. Oh my god, what is this kid? I'm with you, Phoenix. He sucks. I mean, I thought he was good looking a little bit at first, but now forget it. I just want to burn him in a dumpster fire. I don't remember the time all that well, but I do believe it was past- Well, this kind of lines up with it, because I think the death was 6.30ish or so. So that's pretty close. How did you know what time it was? I see you're not wearing a watch, so... How did you know? I'm sure he's gonna give us some crazy answer about this. 
Is that the best you can do? Do you think you can discredit me like that? You're just a third-rate biased fool. I guess I can't expect real smarts from you. Phoenix, just kick this dude, man. Right in the- right in the- right in the crotch. What should I do now? Just answer the damn question, will ya? I'm not taking any of this crap. Answer the question. How did you know what time it was? Oh dear. Oh my Christ, this dude. I can't believe I have to deal with a worm like you. You're just a shallow man who can only slam on desks and point at people for fun. Yeah, but at least I know how to put my eyeliner on correctly. No? I guess I don't have a choice. I'll try to explain it so that even a third-rate simpleton like you can understand. There was this little thing they call a clock at the park. Did you get that? Do you know what a clock is? It's a thing that tells you the time. Oh my... I have never wanted to burn someone so much in my life and I went through the whole first game. As you can see, Mr. Wright, it's even in this picture of the crime scene. It is. It's right there. Oh, so it is. I looked at that clock and that's how I knew the time. But if you ask me, this whole concept of breaking time apart is total utter nonsense no man should follow. A real first class person doesn't live by and is to wear a watch. Oh, what a ridiculous notion. People should live freely without constraint. Oh my... Pfft. I couldn't get all of it. And yet again, another flood of meaningless words. Talk about a first class waste of time. <laughs> what a sticky situation. In any case... Okay. All of a sudden, a police officer falls from above right in front of my eyes. Okay. How did he just fall in front of your eyes? And how did you know he was a police officer? Yes, go ahead and shake your head at me. You obviously have no idea how powerful my deducive reasoning skills are. With one glance, I could tell just what kind of occupation he held. That shoddy do-it-yourself hairstyle practically screamed it also the way he was tied in his hair tied cheap shoes. And also, it was also because he was wearing an officer's uniform. Oh, that would be a little more important. <laughs> Jesus. Shouldn't that statement have come first? Wow, that's pretty impressive. Hey, Nick, do you think he's figured out what I do? Even I haven't figured out the way you just- Oh, poor Maya. Jesus. Without a thought, I looked up in there and met the eyes of a charming young lady. I'm gonna press all of it and then go back and see. Are you sure you got a good look at her face? Ugh, this dude. Animals have this thing called an eye, Mr. Wright. They use this eye to see things. In the case of humans, we have two of them. Yes, even you. Wow, what an ass. I don't care if I have them or not. Did you or did you not get a clear look at her face? What you gotta say? That's what the witness was just about to get to. I would like to request that Mr. Wright not use such a loud voice during questioning. Sustained. Mr. Wright, please refrain from raising your voice in this court. What? Jesus. I'm with you, Phoenix. You're right. Phoenix, right? Are you finished? I'd like to continue if that's all right with you. Uh, uh. Of course I remember a sweet face. It was that of the pretty defendant there. Press it all. So you're sure you're not mistaken? Please, don't confuse your pitiful train wreck of a life with mine. Hey, I went to university, pal. I've got my degree. I'm what you call a famous brand name product while you are only a cheap imitation. There is no way someone as magnificent as myself could have made a mistake. Of course, of course. Oh boy. Did you notice anything else of interest, witness? The only other thing I saw was the banana that fell with the police officer. Well, tell us about the banana. Jesus. The banana? Well, it was actually more than just one. More like a bunch of bananas. Now, what would a bunch of bananas be doing there? He doesn't even know. Nobody knows. And why would I know such a thing? I'm only telling you what I saw. That's really strange. Maggie never mentioned anything about a bunch of bananas. That's it, Nick. He's gotta be lying about the bananas. Hmm, he could be, but... There's no reason for him to lie about there being bananas at the crime scene. No, he's just an idiot, that's all. Well, maybe he thought he was seeing one thing and it was something else. He must something about that third statement is bugging me. I need to go back to that. Think, Phoenix, think. Hmm. If my client is incorrect, there's no way he could have seen what he says he did. Yeah, yeah, pres Okay, so let's present the baseball glove then. Which means if we can somehow show he's lying, yeah, that's exactly what we need to do. Alright, so let's do that. So let's do the glove first, and then there's something that he said that was weird. Is everything okay, Nick? Yeah, yeah I'm good. 
I was at the park all afternoon, deep in thought about my life situation. Oh, you can't you can't reverse these, which is really too bad. Ba, 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 ba. Okay, here's what we got. Bananas. It was this. This has to be it. I'm not screaming objection, by the way. A couple of people asked me to do it, but I'm not going to do it. It probably won't even work on this thing. Mr. Wellington, I believe I have the bananas you saw right here. I mean, to be fair, it does look like bananas. I thought it was. Oh, so you knew about the bananas too? Why didn't you say so earlier? Because, okay. <laughs> you know what? I'm not even, even going to bother. But don't think you can use this as a way to pull out information from me. And that's where you'd be wrong. Mr. Wright? What is the meaning of this? Isn't that the baseball glove? Huh? What? A baseball glove? Oh my god, what's going on with your teeth, boy? You look like a nutcracker. I bet he is. What? Doesn't it look delicious? Care for a bite? Th that's... That's not... No! Your Honor, I think this proves one very important fact. This witness... <laughs> loves bananas! <laughs> Has bad eyesight. By the way, just how bad are your eyes? Huh? How- what? You- why are you asking me about this all of a sudden? Your honor, it is very simple to mistake a glove for a bunch of bananas. Uh, no, I don't think so. Objection overruled. Oh my god, what is this face? Jesus! You're one of those people, yes, you know what I mean. You're like those people who refuse to accept Galileo. You used to reserve the world for the new possibility. Sure, in the end, we find out that in fact it's not a glove but bananas, and viewed from afar, I doubt there's room enough to think that the Oh. Oops. And that is why I asked how bad your eyesight is. They're both 20-25. I suppose you're gonna tell me that's terrible, right? Why are you not wearing your glasses today, then? Mm-hmm. Because they broke. Those are his glasses. I was just joking about that at first, but I think I'm actually right. Ugh, that's because I lost them recently, you see. Of course, I was planning on getting a new pair made right away. But you know, my glasses are no ordinary glasses, so to replace them... How about when you witnessed the crime? Were you wearing your glasses then? Oh my god, he's strangling himself! What is happening? How about it, witness? You are an unrelenting evil man. You are like those people who rejected Joan of Arc, and she was brave and courageous only to be caught by horrible and unrighteous people, and while she didn't do anything wrong, she was gruesomely burned at the- Which boils down to where you- You were not wearing your glasses at the time. Therefore, the identity of the woman at the scene of the crime and that of the defendant cannot be proven to be the same by this witness. Yeah. Oh my Christ, that's really scary. Jesus. But the height difference was only nine feet. It was very possible for him to see the face of the culprit standing on the upper path. Hmm. Witness, please be more accurate in your testimony. Remember, a person's life is at stake. Y yes Your Honor. Now then, please continue with your testimony. Please tell the court what happened next in the moments after you witnessed the crime. Mm-hmm. What happened next? This guy's about to die. He's gonna strangle himself in court. Jesus. The girl on the upper path ran away as soon as she realized I was there. After that, I immediately called the police station to report the crime. It must have been 6.45 p.m. when I made the call. Mm-mm. Right there. That's a lie. Because 6.30 was the time. So, no, I don't think so, sir. Sir. Well, I'm gonna get him on that right now. They must have a lot of free time on their hands since they showed up within 10 minutes. Mm-mm. I almost want to go right to that and press that instead of the rest. So the person who was on the upper path saw you and then ran away. That doesn't seem like something Maggie would do. I don't think that's right either. Which is why even someone without a superior brain like mine can understand that. That girl is the murderer. No, she's not. Please. You may question the witness. Oh, I'm going to. Uh, forgive me. I'm going right to that third statement because I really want to see if I'm right about this. That really just stood out to me. Ran away as soon as she realized I was there. Uh, should I press this? Because this just seems wrong, too. But I don't know what I would have to give in, in proof of it. She ran away just like that? Yes, she did. She saw me and then flew the nest like the guilty bird she is. Maggie, you didn't run away, did you? Maybe she ran away to call the cops. Oh, I'm sorry. Was that pun too hard for someone who only has a third-rate education? Oh my god, Phoenix, no! <laughs> anyway, if she ran away, the instant she saw you, how could she tell how could you tell it was my client? Oh, there you go. The witness has already answered that question. He has stated that the defendant is the culprit. 
this is true, Mr. Wright. I'm striking your question from the record. Oh, shoot. Hmm. After that, I immediately called the police station to report the crime. How did you call? Immediately? As in... As in immediately, I mean, sure, a minute might have elapsed before I did, but that's the duty of every good citizen, or did they not teach you that at your pitiful school? Oh my Christ. Hey Nick, I think you should take a look at the court record for a sec. Yup, I think so too. Because it's coming up right here. Th oh, I'm gonna do it right here. I, I think I think I can just present it here without pressing him, can I? I'm gonna try it. I don't know if this is correct, but I think it is. Because this says 6.30. No, 6.28. Yeah, 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 yeah. Objection. That means a whole bunch of time passed. So what was he doing? Mr. Wellington, would you please take a look at this? You mean the victim's autopsy report? According to this, the murder occurred at 6.28 p.m. So what of it? You said that you called the police immediately after the murder took place. However, by the time you had called the police, it was already 6.45. There's clearly a 15-minute gap here. Do you deny it? Yeah, oh, I don't like that. That's really scary. Holy crap. <laughs> Jesus. I think this court would like to hear what you were doing during this 15-minute gap. Ugh. What you gonna say? Shut up. The witness was in shock at the time after hearing- after witnessing a terrible murder. It's only to be expected that he would be a little dazed. I don't think so. 15 minutes is hardly what I would call little dazed. Ah! Mr. Wellington. Yes? Explain yourself. What were you doing during those 15 minutes? Yeah, what were you doing? Writing someone's name incorrectly in the sand, I think. I, I, uh, uh, telephone. Uh, I mean... Spit it out. I was searching for a phone booth. A phone booth? You mean you don't have a cell phone? Oh, here we go. It's his cell phone. You and your questions, as if you're trying to open all the layers of a matryoshka doll. You must think you're really something special. Witness. I lost my cell phone there, are you happy? Mm-hmm. You lost it. Unbelievable, you lose glasses and your cell phone? Yeah, you ain't getting into a good school, sir, I'm sorry. You must be very scatterbrained when it comes to your belongings. What? Are you saying that first-rate people are never allowed to lose things? Haven't you ever heard that all geniuses have strange quirk or two by that rationale? Since I have my own quirk, don't think the simple plain people like you can understand. <laughs> oh god, this is so difficult. Enough. Oh man, oh man. Wait, hold on a second. He lost his cell phone. Nick, that cell phone, could it be? It is. You mean this phone Maggie found? There's no way. Boy, I didn't see this coming. What should I do now? No, question further for sure. Get him, Phoenix! Oh man, this is exciting. Mr. Wellington, where is your cell phone right now? He doesn't know. What are you getting at all excited about? You seem to be a little confused. I found my phone, I'll have you know. See, here it is. Oh, here is it? <laughs> I think that was a typo. Oh, I see. Hmm, looks like he's got his phone. And I thought that just maybe was his. It's, it, it is, he probably got a new one, is all. I'm sure that's what it was. Well, then I think we've cleared this issue up. Wait a minute now. At the time of the murder, the witness did not have a cell phone because he had lost it. Hold on. Mm-hmm. I knew something was weird. When they talked about the clock and I realized I didn't notice it in the picture before, I was like, wait a minute, was there a phone booth in the picture or was I crazy? There's a phone booth right here! Oh, hell no. You about to go down as soon as I can present it. Therefore, the delay in his call was caused by the search for a phone booth. No. Nope. Give me... When, when do I get to press this, though? Well, that's the gist of it. I guess you could put it that way and leave it at that. Do you have any further questions? Yes, I do. There is something. Thank you. Jesus Christ. Phoenix, do it. Your Honor, the witness's testimony does not make sense. I don't believe that there was ever a need for the witness to search for a phone. How dare you? What you want, boy? You can't just make outrageous claims like that. You do have some sort of proof, don't you? I got it. We got this. Don't worry. Alright, let's have this proof, then. God, didn't you people look at the damn photo? 